Hello, this is Pastor Mike Miller, and this is the Midweek Bible Study at First Baptist Church of Columbiana, Alabama. Today we're talking about prayer. Specifically, what is prayer and why should we pray? Before we get into our Bible study, let's take a moment to pray for special needs that we are aware of in our community. These are those that I am personally aware of that have requested prayer. We need to pray for Mr. Oliver Milstead, Miss Leada Nicholson, Susan Todd, and the family of Miss Laura Rogers. Let's pause to pray together. Father, be with these whose names have been called out here this evening, and we know that there are many others out there in need of prayer. We just lift them up to you. We pray that you would just um, comfort them, uh, be with these families, give them an extra measure of your grace and your strength and your unconditional love during this time. Help us as a family in Christ, even though we are separated somewhat for the time being, help us to continue to reach out to these, to lift them up in our prayers, and we trust them to your care. We pray again for our nation, and we pray, Lord, for those who have contracted the coronavirus. We pray for strength and healing, and we ask it all in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Hey guys, I want to make you aware of one thing before we get into our Bible study tonight. You know, as a church staff, we've been talking about what can we do for Easter Sunday morning. Uh, it looks like at this point, um, we're not going to be able to, to come together for Easter Sunday as we normally would, but we still want to celebrate that special day. This Sunday is Palm Sunday, and then uh, a week from this Sunday is Easter Sunday, April the 12th. So one of the things that we've talked about doing that we're going to do is we're going to have the Lord's Supper together. Even though we're we're at a distance from each other, we can still come together and by video have the Lord's Supper together as a church family. So we've ordered some individually sealed uh, cups and uh, and has the cup and the bread together individually sealed. So we're going to make those available. They'll be outside the covered entrance uh, of the church starting this weekend. And we encourage you to come by and pick one up for each member of your family that will be watching. And, uh, and we're going to celebrate Easter Sunday morning by celebrating the Lord's Supper together. And we're talking about some other special things, and we'll be in touch with you about that in the coming days. Let's look at our Bible study tonight. You know, during this coronavirus pandemic, many people are, are working from home. Some are sheltering in place, and the rest of us are, are, are working and staying home as much as possible during this time until this thing passes. The result is that a great number of us have more time than we've had before because we're not running back and forth to work. We're not running to ball fields or shopping or, or whatever. I've heard some people say that they're using this extra time, you know, to binge on their favorite uh, TV shows or watch their favorite movies or catch up on their reading or, or whatever. I have an idea. Why not utilize this extra time that you're having in your life right now to develop your prayer life. What a what a great time to pray. I mean, we all are in need of prayer right now. We certainly need to be much in prayer for others. Um, as followers of Christ, we need prayer more than ever before. We need to pray for ourselves, for fellow believers, for those who don't know Christ. We need to pray for our nation and its leaders during this time. We need to pray for those who are sick with this virus and for those who are most vulnerable right now. So let's talk about prayer. If I told you that you would have an opportunity to talk personally with Jesus Christ today and that you could make one special request of him, what would it be? Have you ever thought about that? What would you ask for? Would you ask for money? Would you ask for maybe a new job? Maybe some kind of healing in your life? The disciples actually had this opportunity. And you know what they asked for? They said, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. Think about that. Of all the requests that they could have made, they chose prayer. Lord, teach us to pray. 
I think that's interesting. I mean, think about that for a moment. They witnessed Jesus preaching some of the greatest sermons that have ever been preached, performing the greatest miracles that have ever been done, healing the sick, and even raising the dead. I mean, they, they were personal eyewitnesses to all of these great events. But they didn't ask Jesus for that. Instead, they said, Lord, teach us to pray. Why is that? I think it was because they saw that prayer was a, a central key to Jesus' life. It was a, a key to his power, his strength, his unconditional love, and basically to everything that he did during his personal ministry here on this earth. Let me just say this. There is nothing more vital to your spiritual life than prayer because prayer keeps you connected to the Heavenly Father. Prayer keeps his power and his blessings flowing into your life. Prayer keeps you connected to him. So if you're lacking some power or blessing or joy in your heart, then maybe you need to examine your prayer life. Notice what Jesus said in Matthew 7, verse 7, ask and it will be given to you. What a marvelous promise from our Lord. Let's talk about that a little bit. First of all, I think that we need to realize that there are um, a lot of misconceptions about prayer, a lot of confusion. For many people, uh, prayer is an act of desperation. It's kind of like that fire extinguisher on the wall and that little sign that says, use only in case of emergency. And some people kind of view prayer that way. Uh, you've heard, you know, the conversation between the pastor and the deacon, and, and they were talking about a particular issue in the church, and the pastor says, well, all we can do now is pray. And the deacon looked at him with a rather forlorn look on his face, and he said, oh, pastor, has it come to that? You know, a lot of people see prayer that way as sort of a last-ditch effort after we've exhausted all other measures after we've done everything else that we could possibly do and that hasn't worked out now it's time to pray when maybe we should have begun with prayer in the first place for some people prayer is like a tug of war they're trying to convince God to do something that is good and so so Lord we're, we're just trying to beg and plead with you and, and the idea is that if we just pester God long enough, eventually he'll give in and he'll grant our request. Well, that's not a good picture of prayer at all. God is a good God. He's far better than you or I, and he's eager to do good things. We don't have to convince him of that. Maybe the worst misconception of prayer is that for many people, prayer is a mundane duty. It's just something that we're supposed to do, something that we have to do, and kind of the motive behind it is, is guilt. I know I should, pray, I should pray, Jesus said we should pray, so it becomes this mundane duty, something that we have to do, because if I don't do it, then I'm being disobedient, and I'm going to get on God's bad side, and he's not going to bless me the way I want him to, and so the result is that uh, we go through this meaningless ritual of prayer and we just kind of say the same things over and over again and it, and it gets to be very meaningless and it becomes something to endure rather than something to enjoy. It's a duty. Today, um, let's talk about the nature of prayer. What is prayer? And why should we pray? In John chapter 15, uh, we find one of the last discussions that Jesus had with his disciples. And Jesus is basically saying to them, guys, uh, I'm going to die, uh, but I'm going to be resurrected. And I'm going to go back to heaven and be with the Father. And I'm not going to be here in physical form after that, but I will be with you spiritually. And you can still talk to me, and we can still communicate together. And he gives us four reasons here for prayer, four reasons for prayer. 
and four descriptions of prayer. First of all, he tells us that prayer is an act of dedication. It's an act of dedication to God. In John 15, beginning in verse 5, he said, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. What does that mean? Prayer is an act of dedication. Well, prayer is an opportunity to express your devotion and your dependence upon your heavenly Father. It's basically saying, God, I need you. That's what prayer is. It's saying, God, I need you. I can't live without you. I'm absolutely dependent upon you. I need your grace. I need your love, your mercy, your strength. Lord, you show me the way. I'm, I'm dependent upon you and I'm dedicating myself to you. That's what prayer is. You know what our biggest problem, I think, with prayer is that we don't feel this dependence upon God oftentimes. We we think we can do it ourselves. And ever since Adam and Eve, man has, has vastly overestimated his abilities. We think, well, I don't really need prayer. I can take care of things on my own. I'm, I'm independent. You know, us Americans are, are known for our rugged individualism and our sense of independence. Uh, the biggest problem in prayer is simply admitting that we need God's help. God, I need you. I need you absolutely. And I need you now. And the reason I think a lot of people don't pray is that, you know, it costs something to pray. It costs honesty. You've got to get honest and real with God. You've got to be willing to admit, God, I am inadequate and I come to you on bended knee, and I pray for your strength. You know, prayer involves confessing your need before God, confessing your sin, your shortcomings. God, I need you. Prayer is first and foremost a declaration of dependence upon God. Jesus said, if you just depend upon me, you can ask whatever you will, and it will be done. That, that's an incredible promise from our Lord, isn't it? If you cut a branch off of a vine, it quickly withers. And if we cut ourselves off from that connection with the Heavenly Father, it doesn't take long for all of our spiritual and emotional strength <clears throat> to just empty. And, uh, <clears throat> and we're basically facing life alone without prayer and dependence upon the Lord. So prayer is our support system. And if you cut it off, you run out of spiritual air very, very quickly. So prayer is an act of dedication. It demonstrates our dependence upon the Lord. Secondly, Jesus also tells us here that prayer is an act of communication. An act of communication. In John 15, beginning in verse 15, the Lord Jesus says this, I no longer call you servants because a servant doesn't know his master's business. Instead, I call you friends. For everything I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give to you. Most of our problems in life are communication problems. Would you agree with that? Communication problems with our spouse, <clears throat> with our children, with our uh, co-workers, with our friends. I mean, communication problems gets us in all kinds of trouble sometimes. And, and, and you, you know, you can't really understand your marriage partner or a friend or whoever without communicating with them. And you can't really understand God, your heavenly father, without communicating with him as well. <clears throat> he says the reason <clears throat> that you can ask anything in prayer is because we're friends. Isn't that amazing? 
the God of the universe, the almighty God who created all things says, I'm your friend. He says here, I'm not going to treat you like slaves. I'm going to treat you as, as a friend. Do you know why we don't pray more often? I think it's because we fail to recognize what a privilege prayer is. You and I are invited to talk to the creator of the universe. And our problem is that we have a hard time believing that God is really interested in our lives. <clears throat> we have a hard time believing that the creator is really interested in my problems, <clears throat> my car payments, my house payment, uh, buying new clothes for the kids, the problems that I've got at work, my back problems, my sinus problems. I mean, sometimes we, we don't realize that God really does care about the details of our lives. And when you fully understand how much God loves you, then prayer is no longer a problem. It becomes a privilege. We actually get to talk to God, the God who made us, the God who understands us, who, who knows our needs, and yet he wants to hear from us on a regular basis basis. So if you find prayer a duty or a drudgery, it just means that you don't really understand who God is. God is interested in everything that is of interest to you. He's interested in your life. He says, I'm your friend. I, I care about you. So prayer is an act of dedication. It's an act of communication. And thirdly, Jesus says prayer is an act of supplication supplication. That's kind of a big long word that we don't use very often, but it simply means our requests, our request, our supplication. Look at John chapter 16, beginning in verse 23. Very truly I say to you, Jesus says, my father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. You know, prayer is God's chosen method of meeting our needs. The Bible teaches that there are some things that God has promised to do only if we pray, only if we ask him. Some people think, well, God already knows everything I need. He already knows my needs. He knows the details of my life, so I don't really need to ask. That's not true. God set it up in his plan for us that there are some things that he will only do if we ask him first. I think that's one of the mysteries of prayer. In the New Testament, we read about these followers of Jesus who were full of joy and full of power and full of spiritual victory in their lives. And they saw these great miracles happening. And, and sometimes we ask, why don't I have that? Why don't I have that sense of joy? Why don't I have that sense of peace? Why don't I have that sense of victory in my own life? And I think the answer to that is simple. We don't ask. James said, you have not because you ask not. If there, there are certain things that God is not going to give you in your life. There's certain things that God is not going to bless you with if you don't ask. Ask and you will receive over 20 times in the New Testament. 20 times the Bible says, ask. Now, whenever the Bible tells us something twice, you know, I mean, you better underline that in, in, in red and you better make sure that you pay attention. But 20 times it tells us to ask. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open to you. Ask and keep on asking. There was a guy who died and went to heaven. And when he got there, <clears throat> St. Peter showed him around a little bit and he saw, all, he saw all of these giant warehouses in heaven. And he walked inside and they were all filled with wonderful gifts from top to bottom, shelf after shelf after shelf of all of these wonderful gifts. And he looked a little closer and there was a tag on each of those gifts that simply said, never asked for. What is it in your life that you're lacking right now simply because you've never asked? You've never asked God. You've never 
trusted it to God's care. You've never bothered to say, Heavenly Father, this I'm asking you for this because I really believe it is a need in my life. Over and over again, the Bible tells us we need to ask. In Psalm 145, it says, He fulfills the desires of those who reverence Him. Psalm 37 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. In Psalm 84, no good thing does he withhold to those who are blameless. And so God is not saying, I'm holding these things back and you have to convince me to give them to you. That's not what he's saying at all. He's saying, I have some wonderful blessings in store for you and I'm just dying to give them to you. But I want you to ask and I want you to trust it for me. God is intensely interested in every aspect of your life. So prayer is an act of dedication. We're saying, Lord, we need you. I'm dedicating myself to you. It's an act of communication. God wants us to talk to him. He wants us to ask. It's, a, it's an act of supplication, asking, asking you shall receive. Um, so um, why does God want us to ask? One of the reasons Jesus said is so that your joy may be complete. So that your joy may be complete. You know, I'm a dad. And even though my daughter is a grown adult now, I still enjoy giving things to her. It brings me joy to give things to my daughter. If you have children or grandchildren, now I have three grandchildren and just love to give them gifts, right? I mean, it brings your heart joy. And our Heavenly Father loves to do good things for us. He loves to give us the best things of heaven, but he wants us to ask. Number four, Jesus tells us here that prayer is an act of cooperation. It's an act of cooperation. This is really exciting. I think God has chosen that we can cooperate with him in his plan for this world. And we do that by praying. Praying enables us to cooperate with God. When we pray for others, we're cooperating with God in reaching out and touching that person in the name of Christ. Prayer is God's way of getting his work done on this earth. Prayer is God saying, I've chosen to limit myself to the faith of my children. What they believe me for is what I'm going to do. So when we pray for other people, we are cooperating with God in getting his work done on this earth. We're teaming up with God. We're carrying out his wishes. In John 14, beginning in verse 12, Jesus said, Whoever believes in me will do the works that I've been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I'm going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. I will do it do it. Let me ask you a question. Have you been doing what Jesus did lately? Have you raised any dead people? Have you healed any sick people? Have you walked on water lately? When we pray, Jesus said we can do greater things than he did. Now, how is that possible? It's possible because prayer is not limited by time or space. Think about that. When Christ came to the earth, he limited, him, limited himself uh, by his humanness. In his humanity, he could only be in one place at a time. He was somewhat limited. Prayer is not limited by time or space. It's not limited by time. The prayers that I pray today may be answered three seconds from now or three hours or three days or three years or 300 years. I mean, it's not limited by time. And prayer is not limited by space. You can pray for somebody in California or Afghanistan 
or wherever they may be. Prayers like sending a missile directly to their heart. I can go into my prayer closet and, and just go around the world. I can travel to Africa, Asia, Russia, wherever, as I pray for missionaries and others who are in need and others who in, in different places around the world, I, I can do that through prayer, cooperating with God in his plan for the world. Prayer is also limitless by its power. People may reject your appeals. <clears throat> Unchurched people, people who don't know Christ, they may reject you when you try to share the good news of Christ with them, but they are totally defenseless against your prayers. No one can keep you from praying for them. I mean, the, 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 the worst, most evil person in the world can't stop you from praying for them. So who are you praying for right now? God can change the course of history through your prayers. Prayer has great power. Prayer can do what God can do. Six times in this passage, Jesus says, if you ask, I will do. Just ask me. He says, your part is asking and my part is doing. That's great. You know, he, he's, he's, God's got a lot more resources at his command than you or I do. Our part in cooperating with God's plan in the world is to pray. And the most important thing that you can do in your Christian life is to talk to your Heavenly Father. Let me ask you this in closing. Who are going to be the great heroes in heaven? You ever thought of that? <clears throat> Who are going to be the great heroes when we get to heaven? Is it going to be the Billy Grahams, you know, who held great crusades and thousands and thousands came to Christ through their ministry? Is it going to be someone like J David Jeremiah, who's on TV preaching every week and, and writing all these wonderful uh, Christian books? Is it going to be some of the great preachers of our time? I don't think so. Here's what I believe. I believe the greatest heroes of heaven are going to be those little old ladies and those little gentlemen and those others who went into their prayer closets day after day and prayed for great things from God. I believe the great heroes of heaven are going to be people that we would never suspect here and now in this life. Prayer is the most important thing that you can do. John Wesley said that God does nothing except through prayer. D.L. Moody said, every great movement of God can be traced back to someone's prayer. What are you praying for right now? What are you trusting God for in your life right now? Maybe we need to understand that the reason we don't have more from God of what we think or what we feel we need, maybe it's because we're not spending time in prayer. We're not really asking God. We're not really trusting him for anything significant in our lives or in the lives of others. May God help us to be people of prayer. Now more than ever before, we need to develop strong prayer lives. We need to ask God for some big things. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Christ our Lord. And Father, some of us need some mighty miracles in our lives right now. Some of us, Lord, need miracles in our marriage or with our health with our jobs, with our finances. Lord, help us to be willing to ask and to trust it all to your care and to understand, Lord, and be reminded in the coming days that when we pray, we're cooperating with you and we get to see you at work in our lives. So help us to be people of prayer, people who are absolutely dependent upon your grace and your strength in our lives. Fill us with your spirit and have your way. In Christ's holy name we ask it. Amen. Thank you. God bless.